It's the match preview, and because it's double game week, we're doing a lot of this, so hopefully you don't get sick of our faces. And joining me tonight to discuss Wednesday night under the lights, it's my co-host, Mark Ryman. How are we getting on this evening, Mark? Yeah, really good, thanks. Um, really positive about this week. I think... Uh... As we were saying before recording, I think I'm feeling most positive about this this game under the lights than and I certainly would have been before the Watford game and probably the most positive I've felt about a, a game at Kenilworth Road for a long time. I think they're a very good side, but I think if we play like we did on Saturday, I think it's going to be one hell of a game. Yeah, you're right. They are a very good side and I, I, I have given them praise in the sense that I made a video saying, will Sunderland run out of steam? And like, yes... Although that sounds like a sort of tongue-in-cheek way of giving them praise. In that, you know, I, I predicted them to finish 17th at the beginning of the season. Whereas now I just think they will make the playoffs. They'll miss out on the top two positions because they do ultimately have a young and relatively inexperienced team. A big part of this, though, is can we carry on what we left off? With Watford, I mean, you've got to hope so, haven't you? I mean, I said it was make or break before the Watford game, um, and I don't think we could have asked for anything more. Um, obviously, Rob Rob talked about this in his post match as well. We we've got to we've got the blueprint for success. It's been there for two years, um, and if anything demonstrated it, um, it was it was Saturday. Um, just every way that we'd play was just with all of that that fight, desire, and skill as well. You know, it wasn't just all all bullying them off the pitch. But I do think that, as you said, Sunderland are a young side, and I think that part of the reason why we beat them in the playoff semi final that day wasn't just the height of our players compared to their theirs after they had all that defensive injury that did help, but it was it was that ability to to press and bully them essentially and I think that actually the side they've got now could still be vulnerable to that style of play as well so we play like we did on Saturday I I give us a really good chance yeah and they have brought in experience in Chris Metham so it's very Mm -hmm. different it's a very different Sunderland from the team that we met under Tony Mowbray yeah it's it's a scooch younger but they have a back line of Luco Nine and Chris Metham now. And so they will be a bit better at perhaps the, I can't think of a better word, aerial bombardment. Yeah. And for this, we have to play two up top. We have to play Elijah and Carlton. Well, they were two. I mean, it's hard to pick out two players, but I don't think you can drop any either of those two on their performances. Eli didn't get his goal, but everything else he did was absolutely fantastic. And, and Morris was most people's man of the match was was incredible. No, you're absolutely right. You've got to, and yeah, you're, they have got they've got a good back line. You know, they've got Tri Hume at, at, at fullback and and Serkin on the other side. That they, they, they're a good back line. I just think, as I say, across the board, if we play as we did from the front um, all the way through the park, I think that the, 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 we can out muscle them. Um, and that's that's the main thing. But you're right; they've got a really good defensive line. They they keep a lot of clean sheets. So, you know, as as we said, it's it's not going to be an easy game by any stretch. Yeah, and looking at the last six games, fortunately, the the stats on FopMob don't go back to like our last time in the championship because I, I remember that five nil where we were on our way down, they're on their way up, and there were just so many Sunderland fans in the home ends that was just devastating but looking at the last six it's actually been a very even split so it's one win for Luton one win for Sunderland and four draws they've always been very tight affairs yeah low scoring draws a lot of them the one that springs to mind for me is the game after Nathan Jones left the first time Danny Hilton getting himself a red card but Mm. we still managing to draw I think it was a penalty Collins penalty wasn't it that was um that that drew us that game and we were holding on towards the end but there's lots of sort of one ones in there there really are you know um so 
yeah, it will be tight. I don't, I don't think either team's going to run away with this. Um, both two of the, the the better squads in the league as well. Uh, but I think we found a formula that worked last time, and I don't think it was just based on circumstance either. So I know they've got a different manager, a slightly different way of playing, uh, but I still think that 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 style of play will will help us. So let's talk about the new manager. So it's Reggie Labrie. I'm get, I'm calling him Reggie Labrie because he's French. So it's got to be Labrie, not Labris, yeah. as everyone's pronouncing it. He plays an attacking <laughs> style of play. And, you know, I, I, I am concerned because, you know, will we see Tom Holmes play? He went off. Um, will we... Uh, you know, who who are we going to see? <laughs> who, can, who can line up for us? Yeah, well, this is obviously the the worry, isn't it? We're talking about uh, I'm talking about positives. Obviously, the worry is who is going to be at the back for us and who's going to be fit. Tom Holmes. It seemed a bit of an innocuous one, really, on Saturday. Um, I think the ref could have done a hell of a lot more to have stopped it happening in the first place. I mean, Lisman had his flag up. Lot, 10 yeah, years before it had happened. flag up. Yeah, yeah. It was it's a mad. completely avoidable situation, but it happened. Um, it looked like, um, and I've looked at the full game replay, it looked like their players seem to have come off worse from that. So um, I'm hoping it's not concussion. Obviously, if it is, we know he's out. Um, Reese Burke looked worrying, looked like a groin injury. And, you know, who knows? But he was out at the end. I don't know how much you read into that, but it, it didn't look good. Um, McGuinness was already a bit injured. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I don't know who we got the back yeah. it looks like Alfie Doughty left centre back <laughs> um, you know he did a great job there I don't really want to see him start in that way though who knows but yeah I mean Tom Holmes it would be a real shame for him wouldn't it because it's taken him such a long time to get going um, and he had apart from that you know suicidal back pass he had he had one of the best halves of football a, a centre back has had at Luton since sort of Ted Amengi last year he's brilliant so solid uh, it'd be such a shame if he wasn't able to make the, the next game and, and, and get some momentum. But God, who knows? Who knows? I think um, Hashioka's fit, um, or it looked like he was, um, and Doughty's fit, and they're the only two guarantees from that starting bit of the back line, really. Yeah, it's it's mad. It's a real headache for, for Rob Edwards. Fortunately, we don't need to think about it. Um, yeah, but there were a lot of people that were out at the end of the game. Amari Bell was out. Ted Amengi was out. Tom Holmes was there. Uh, he seemed yep. in good spirits. And, of course, Tom Lockyer was out as well. Which You know, I'm not reading into that at all, but... <laughs> He, he looked like the, he was having a the, great time. The fear in the Sunderland supporters' eyes if Tom Lockyer starts <laughs> lining up. He absolutely <laughs> tortured him in that second leg and obviously scored the second goal as well. God, they wouldn't believe their luck, would they, if he came out? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Bring Gabe uh, back on, a, uh, on an emergency <laughs> loan. <laughs> emergency loan situation. <laughs> I think that's only for goalkeepers, right, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, I think you can get an emergency loan, but I think for outfield players, you literally have to be down to the bare bones. I think like eight outfielders or something crazy like that. I was Someone say, can if we, tell us in the comments. If we didn't qualify last year, Ollie, I don't, I don't know how we're getting this. We, we had the coaching staff yeah. out there at one point, didn't we? Basically. So... Yeah, it's it's going to be the unknown in terms of centre backs. But hey, we're Luton Town, and we've been we we're used to a centre back crisis. When's there not a centre back crisis? <laughs> I know, I know. I think Steve Moore said in the phone in, we're, we're going to have to get eight centre backs like on the in the squads just just to start a season, just to you know have some redundancy in place for when there's <sighs> a real problem like this. Um, Going into this, Sunderland's, they're in very good form. You know, a 1-0 win against Middlesbrough. Sunderland, 2 Derby nil, which, uh, again, low scoring. They drew with Leeds. And obviously, there was some fortunate circumstances for their, you know, the equalising goal right at the end. And they beat Hull 1-0. Mm. They haven't been blowing teams away, but they do look a threat on the break, as we saw against Hull. Although yeah. that was absolute suicidal defending. 
can't get around that. It was terrible defending, but yeah, right. I mean, it's still a wonderful composure, wasn't it, to finish that that off? I mean, he ran basically the whole length of the pitch. Um, and, you know, away at Hull is, is a tough game to play. As you said, they've not been blowing teams away, but there aren't many teams that have been consistently. Even Burnley started the season scoring nine goals in two games. That's dried up. Leeds haven't been blowing teams away. You know, so... It, it, it's it's not easy to win games of football in this league. I know it's a bit of a cliche, but you know, and they've got they've gone away to Hull and they've got a really good result from that. Um, so they'll be coming to, to Kenilworth Road full of confidence, and they'll probably feel like they owe us one as well. Um, so I've, I've been, as I said, I've been really impressed with them. Nothing that I said previously about how we should play against them changes that. I still think though that physicality wise, I think. We, we are stronger than them, literally stronger than them. Um, and and we need to play to that, as we did on Saturday. Um, but yeah, I mean, they've been great. And and Reggie Labrie, as you say, it must be Labrie, right? It's not like... It has to be. It's Del Boy yeah. pronunciation. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's got to be Labrie. Uh, he's done brilliantly. And he's he's not that dissimilar from where Mowbray, Mowbray was at his best, you know, playing youth, playing attacking fast, flowing on the floor football. That's what Mowbray did when he was he was there and, and did very successfully at Sunderland. I think that a bit like when, when Edwards took over from Jones, obviously different circumstances, but adopting a similar style suited Edwards especially initially and it seems to have done here as well most of the players that are under Labrie at the moment a lot of those were there under Mowbray too so they'll be used to playing that style of football um, and they've got some real standout talent there as well <clears throat> you know uh, there's there's a few players that you, you don't want running towards your, your, your box you know the, the guy that scored um, Isidore I think his name isn't scored yeah. on, on, on Sunday um, and obviously Joe Bellingham Roberts you know the, the Rig, Chris Rigg I don't think had a great game but scored that amazing goal a couple of weeks ago so they, they've got some real talent and, and we've got to be on it really on it um, in the midfield to, to stop them playing through us yeah, as as you say, the midfield battle is very important. They play a four three three, so I I think with the three five two that hopefully we're going to stick with. And Rob has sort of hinted towards it. He said like we found our Luton again, so yeah. hopefully it is a case of playing the same way. You you also forgot about Romain Mundell, who who's got three yeah. goals as well as Isidore this season. What yeah. a player he is! I, I, I dare I say he's an upgrade on Jack Clark. I think. Yeah. I think he, he's got more pace than Jack Clark. He, he's got a little bit more trickery than Jack Clark. And I, I haven't seen enough of him to, to know whether his finishing is better. But three goals in the first 10 games, like he, he has to, right? Yeah, it's a really good start. No, yeah, you're absolutely right. And yeah, losing Jack Clark would have been a massive blow to them. And they they, they haven't acted as if they've lost any big player whatsoever. <clears throat> and it it shows that their recruitment department is is absolutely miles away from the Sunderland of a few years ago. You know, they've clearly sorted oh, it out, yeah. not just with the with the management, but also behind the scenes there as well. You know, and a Sunderland yeah. that's that's got that right is, is a scary prospect in any league. They're no longer looking at Zlatan Ibrahimovic on the, the bottom of the list. <laughs> yeah. it's like, no, what, what am I seeing Zlatan <laughs> on the bottom of this list? Um, oh. Yeah, it's an interesting lineup that they could go with, like the four three three. So they have Daniel sitting, and then Rig and Bellingham sort of pushing way up behind the front <clears> three. <throat> so it, it can become a four five one when they're defending. So. I I do feel like if you break through their midfields, then the defence could be sort of... Because it, it's, other than Chris Metham, it's a very short defence. And it's also a very young defence. Like, yeah. you hit the nail on the head saying, like, Dennis Serkin and Tri Hume, they're, they're both remarkable talents. But at the yeah, same great. time, they're, they're, they're both relatively short and very young and... They're not going to want Elijah or Carlton climbing all over them, will they? No, I mean, Trihume couldn't cope with it at our place. He was brilliant in the away leg, um, the playoffs. He was really brilliant. He's probably one of their standout players in that first leg. 
But the second leg, none of the players could really handle it. You talk about the midfield. I think going forward, I think similar to Watford, we'll probably try and bypass the midfield actually a, a bit more as we did. I don't think we just lumped it up there at all. But I think that if you've got Morris and Adebay up there, you've got Morris who can hold the ball up. And, and if, like you said, if they're defending with five in the middle or, or, or even three, then it's too dangerous against a team like Sunderland to try and play it through them to the likes of Chong if he's fit. Or Kraus, if he's fit. <laughs> there's quite a few that we might say this about. Um, there's quite a few. I really hope Tom Kraus is fit. Um, I really do. And, of course, Chong as well. But I still think Chong's still not really hit his, hit his straps this season. But I think that you're much better off almost bypassing that midfield and keeping the press in in their their end of the end of the field make the use of i don't want to be all cliche kenworth road but you know make the use of the size of the pitch compared to to their place the stadium of light pitch is absolutely massive um so and and that can help us a little bit but yeah as you said i think that i, I think that that's the best way to get at them definitely yeah, about win the ball back and get it forward as quickly yeah. as possible. None of this 100%. passing it across the back. If you are going to pass it across the back line, pass it to someone who's going to play a diag as quick yeah. as possible. Um, not into midfield and then try and play it around the midfield because that is a quick way to like get dispossessed with Rig, mm. Bellingham and Dan Neal buzzing around. Yeah. They're dispossessed. Turn it over to Mundell, Roberts or Isidore. And then no, don't, don't you don't, stop you it. don't want those three running <laughs> stop at it. you. It's, you know, of course, it's going to be exactly. horrendous. Well, we we talk about the injury situation. You'd imagine that it, if if McGuinness is our only foot, foot fit centre back, um, Mengi and Burke are out. We're not going to play that. Surely, we're not going to expect players like Hashioka um, to be to be doing the stuff that Mengi and Burke does. So you would hope not. Um, you really would. Um, you know. It, it clearly suited us the way we played um, against Watford. And yes, it was partly because it was a local derby um, and the intensity of that game, but also just just the way that, that, that the extra dimension of Morris and the third midfielder to help the press, if they did get the ball, you know, they got the ball. We still had all of those five players suddenly on them. That makes a big difference too. So let's talk about our score predictions then for this. I've gone 1-1. One, one. Yeah, that's the sensible I, one. I, well, yeah, like I, I've, I've, I know you can't look back at previous games and dictate the future, but I, I've just done it because I know we we love a one-one mm. against Sunderland. I, I, I think we'll be able to restrict them by you. Yeah. You, you got the last. Got to, you, you got big fo- boots to fill now because you yeah. smashed it last week. Oh, it's, yeah, I got too excited, Ollie. Right, and went three <laughs> two. Um, even though you're absolutely right, the sensible thing is to look at previous results, right? Uh, and you're right, it's always been tight draws or, or the odd win. 2 0 was probably the biggest margin of victory that we've had for a very long time. I don't know, I've not looked at the stats. Um, but I've gone 3 2. I got, I got too excited. But, but on the basis that I think that we found a way to score goals, a couple of reasons why I think that, that we could score more than one goal. Um, Alfie Doughty's corners, um, I think were excellent every single one was a threat even the ones that didn't go in um there were very few that were duds there were a couple of free kicks that could have been better the one that led to Burt's chance for example just hit the first man but his corners were very good and having Morris there is is a massive bonus for that as well so on the basis that Morris and Elijah play I think corners will play a big part obviously they did in the last game in that semi-final um so that gives me hope that we'll, we'll score more than more than one um and as have we as we've already mentioned how dangerous they are on the break and how quickly they can play through teams and i still think that, that there is a slight vulnerability there of course there will be um particularly with a makeshift back line i can't see us cle- keeping a clean sheet either so th- there is some logic to it but i did get a bit excited and think we're going to score three goals again Ah, but why, what's wrong with getting excited? It's nice. But I'll, I'll leave nice? you. Yeah, I, know. I know, it's good to get excited. You know, yeah. it's nice to see Luton playing football like, like we were, you know. And yeah. it's given the, the crowd like it. They The crowd love the direct football. We were so up for it, not just because it was a local derby, but because we were getting the ball into attacking positions against Watford and we love that you know as opposed to the ball getting 
pinged around between the back three and everyone going, oh, 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 oh we're going well, to lose it. Yeah, well, I think that's it, isn't it? I mean, it's not it's not the style of football, really. It's just the attacking nature of it. You know, we, I, we'd all be fine with football on the floor if it led to, to abundances of chances, but I don't think it has done. Um, so, yeah, whereas we, we were we were carving them open a number of times um, and could have scored more than three. So I'll leave you with this. Between the 1-1... The, f- the last, the first one-one that we had with them recently, and the five-nil that they, you know, pretty much relegated us final game of the season. Mm-hmm. There was a three-nil in the two thousand seven two thousand eight season, so we were League One. Now, who do you think the goal scorers were? There were two goal scorers. Three-nil to them. Did you say to us? To three-nil us. to Luton. Sorry. Yeah. 2007-2008. So League in the One league cup, under... League Cup, oh, in second the league round. Cup. Okay, so this would have been under... Um, this would have been on our way down, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, it's under for, Blackwell. Uh, uh, Drew Tolbert. Uh, he was in the Fe- starting lineup, Warren but he Feeney didn't surely get a goal. didn't score, did he? No, it wasn't no way. Warren Feeney never scored, his... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who else I'll tell you, you'll then? never get it. It was David oh, okay. Bell... And oh, a Paul hell. Furlong brace. Paul Furlong, yeah, of course he played for us, didn't he, for a bit? Just for that, was it just for that season he came to us? It's just that season. He, he yeah. was decent for 30 years. No, he was. I, I thought he was yeah. a, he was a decent player, yeah, considering you know, he spent most of his career well all over the place, but QPR's the one I was remembering from. I mean, yeah. he started his career at Watford as well. Yeah, no, um, of course, yeah, yeah. Do you want to hear this team? I'll just rattle it off from Hass's Go Heritage. On people, on I encourage him. people to check it out. David Ford, <clears throat> Richard Jackson, Alan Goodall, Steve Robinson, Chris Perry, Chris Coyne, <laughs> Dean Morgan, Matty Spring, Paul Furlong, Drew Talbot, and David Bell. David Bell was and then player, a bench. Though, to be fair. Yeah, oh, he was. He was David the Bell Wellingborough was Wizards. Yeah. And then the subs were Keith Keane, Paul McVeigh, and Calvin Andrew. I Oof. love Hatter's Heritage. It's so good for stuff like this. I've forgotten a lot of those players. Yeah. That, <laughs> that, but to be fair, that, that was a season to forget, wasn't it? Let's be honest. Um, yeah, it uh, was. But yeah. Was a, yeah. 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 A long time ago now. But yeah, how we got 3-0 out of that then? Fair yeah, enough. well, it was League Cup. I, I imagine Sunderland didn't turn up, really. Yeah. 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 I think, that, I think they will. I think they will Wednesday. But I think oh, we'll yeah. be on it as well. But I, I think really we'll do. turn up, yeah. No, yeah, me and too. Uh, encourage the guys to, you know, fans get behind the team. We've got to make noise. It's got to be like that second leg playoff final. It's got to be like that every single game. Uh, my voice is only just recovering now, but we got this. We do, we do. Come on, you hatters. We got Come this. On, you hatters. <laughs>